Join me right now on Kumite TV. Back on the show is UFC light heavyweight contender Glover Teixeira. What's going on, Glover? I'm good, man. How's everything? Good, 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 man. Um, let's jump right right into it. UFC 241 DC versus Stipe 2. Did you watch that fight? Uh, I know before I to be honest, like uh, you know, they they both are incredible fighters. I I um. I say anything can happen, you know, especially in the heavyweight division. But, um, you know, in the beginning of the fight, I thought Cormier was going to win. Uh, I, I was like, oh, man, Steve is going to get knocked out again because Cormier come aggressive. He was getting, you know, he was getting good shots and, uh, you know, take him down. But, yeah, I mean, Steve did a you know, very good job adjusting the situation. In the fourth round, and a fourth round, was fourth or third round? Um, fourth round. Fourth round, right? Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was a uh, was very good. It was very good fight, man. Well, all the card. I mean, the three last fights was amazing. It was amazing. Did you, you know, when you watch that fight as a, you know, as a fighter, as a coach, and you see that DC was, you know, winning that fight the whole time? And then Stipe made the adjustments, right? Those shots to the body. Do you think it's more of Stipe making the adjustments or DC not adjusting to the shots to the body that won the fight for Stipe? Yeah, I think, uh, uh, I don't know if he got, he got tired. He even say, I don't know why I stopped, uh, I stopped pressuring him because, uh, uh, Cormier come down, like maybe he got tired and maybe he was like, you know what? I don't know if you think he was winning already because in my in my mind I, he was winning, you know. Um, he won the three rounds, or, or even if he was very close. I mean, he's the champion. He's gonna, you know, most likely he's gonna keep the title. Maybe he stepped back a little bit, just, just you know, he didn't put the pressure that he was doing on uh, in the first in the first three rounds, you know. So he kind of stepped back a little bit and keep start growing, man. Start growing. You can't. It's one of the things about fighting at top level guys like that. You cannot let the guys breathe. You cannot let the guy grow. You cannot let the confidence grow because, you know, I mean, heavyweights, you know, a champion like Stipe, he's going to come after. He's going to. He did a great adjustment, you know, with the. Uh, Cormier come with the hands. It's a, it's a hard to fight a guy like that. And he did a de- adjustment with that hand. He's like, hey, I can't hit him in the head, right? Because he moved his head good. And he started going for the body. And it was beautiful body shots, man. Beautiful. Definitely beautiful. Now, you know, there's a lot of debate of who's the greatest of all time. Is it DC or Jones? DC comes out and says that, hey, you know, if you – got busted by USADA, if you, you know, if you pissed hot, you shouldn't be considered one of the greatest of all time. What is your thoughts on that? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I mean, John, John, John is, uh, I mean, he beat DC two times. It's not even, you know, it's, it's hard to compare. He can't compare that, you know, he lost two times. DC is a great fighter. Uh, but John, John is definitely like, uh, yeah, he's, um, you know, I don't know the greatest of all the time because you look at the light lightweight guys, um, like B.J. Penn, Matt Hills, George Saint Pierre. You know, those guys. Uh, you know, compare. You can't forget. Like the, the reality is like always. People are gonna debate who's the greatest of all the time, and they say who the greatest of all the time, the greatest of all the time. But uh, they always compare to the new guys. <laughs> They forget the old guys. Yeah. They forget the old like uh, the old fighters. Like George St. Pierre was the greatest of all time when he was a champion. Vijay Japan was the greatest of all time when he was, you know what I mean. And later on, they start losing. I mean, George St. Pierre didn't lose. You know, he come back after a loss and he beat uh, uh, Bean Spin. I mean, not after a loss, after retirement, Bean, uh, beat Bean Spin. Um, you know, I man, he, uh, in, my, in my opinion, uh, I think George Sampier is the greatest of all time, greatest fighter of all time. Um, uh, you know, heavyweight division. I believe Cain Velasquez was the greatest of all time. Uh, and uh, like heavyweight, uh, you know, you got to give it to John Jones, you know. You got to give it to him. 
when you see BJ Penn continue fighting and he was one of the greatest of all time, right? Or he is one of the greatest of all time and he's losing. I think he's lost like seven in a row and he and he continues to fight. What do you think about that? Even even though he's not really getting like smashed on, he's just losing. So should you should you continue fighting, you think? Hey man, it's not on my uh and all uh, uh how do you say uh my dude to say you know if he was my friend I probably you know talk with him I don't know his training uh, and uh, if he's just bad luck I don't know you know um, I know BJ is just like um, I know for a fact that he doesn't need the money you know I know uh, um, he just fight because he love it and uh, who am I to say uh, the guy should stop fighting yes I mean it's a bad. Uh, um, resume in the, in the end of his career, you know, lose that much, that much time in a row. But, uh, I mean, he's, he's a legend, man. He's a legend. Uh, who am I to say something, you know, DJ Penn, he can do whatever he wants. You know, I just hope, uh, he be smart and stay healthy and don't go overboard and, you know, but, uh, I don't know. I think if it was me in his place, uh, I'll probably retire, but at this point, <laughs> at this point, I think he just wanted to to get a victory, man. He just want to get. He's like, I'm not gonna retire after seven loss. I gotta get in there. I gotta beat somebody, and I gotta retire. You know, at this point, I think, uh, you know, that's why he probably wanted to do. You know, get a, get out with the victory. You know, and and retire. I think that's the mentality that got him to the point he is. That's the mentality that got him to become a legend of the sport is that mentality is I got to win. I got to get back there and I got to get the victory. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you got to respect the, mm -hmm. the timing, you know. Uh, <clears throat> it's a lot of time people see, oh, this guy is, is retired when he was like, you know, 35. And this guy's, you know, like your Romero is fighting like I think he's 41 or 42. Yeah. Incredible, incredible fighter, you know. But is 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 like Vanderlei Silva talked with me some some time we we both were talking about you know and he's like it's not how old you are it's how many miles you have it on you know is it, is the miles man the miles the injuries you know and get in that ring and you know, how how many wars do you have you know and all of that that counts on you uh, on your future. Uh, definitely injuries. I don't know. I know BJ. He, he I don't know him that well to see how much injuries that he he go through or not. But you know, it's it's tough. You know, the miles it, it, it gets you, man. It gets you for sure. All right. Now let's talk about you know your resurgence. You've won two in a row. Both of these fights, you came back and submitted your opponents. Now in your last fight against Kudalaba. What adjustments did you have to make to get the victory? Uh, Kutalaba, that was the, 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 the game plan, you know, go in, uh, be smart, move my head, move, grow with the punches, because I knew he was going to come aggressive. I knew he was going to come aggressive, and I keep taking the shots, you know, getting his leg, get him tired, and I stop feeling him, you know, getting tired. And the end of the first round, I already saw uh, feeling he's not throwing hard, hard punches anymore. Still dangerous, but you know you can feel the guy. You can feel his takedown defense wasn't there. You know he he was not just explosive. You know I can feel he started getting fatigued and tired, and uh, and that's when I start picking up the game. Uh, that was the game plan to be smart, move with the head, and 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 eventually get him to the ground and uh and, and finish him that was a, I, I was so good when when you know a lot of times like you think a game plan and you go over there and you do something completely different and you're like oh okay you know that works but you know but when you the game plan works like that man it's just amazing uh you know how um how strategy, you know, the strategy really work and uh, you keep you keep doing it. That's what I'm going to keep doing. Keep the strategy, keep uh, being smart about it. That's why I think uh, one of the big um, key in John Jones' game mm 
his strategy for each fight. You tied the record for most finishes. You know, you can break the record in your next fight. Does yeah. continuing your career with these records, you know, that you can break a record, you can tie a record. You know, I think you have another record for most submissions also. You're tied with John Jones now yeah. in the light heavyweight division. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah, so I think so. I think it's uh, something like the most finish, most, you know, tied with John Jones and, uh, you know, I I'm, I'm going over there. My 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 game my game plan in the end of the fight is always finish the guys. I like to finish the guys. I learned that from long time ago from Chuck Liddell, and you know, you want Chuck was like, hey, you want to fight? You want to be excited? You want people to like you? Go over there, finish fights, and then that's my style. You know, it's not always work. You know, but you, everybody that see my fight, they see. Then I'm pushing forward and I'm looking for finish. I'm not a guy that, oh, you know, this not working. Like, for example, against Gustafsson, I could step, you know, outside and say, hey, man, I lost four rounds. Eh, I'm just going to relax in the outside here and not get knocked out. You know what I mean? But I go over there and like, hey, I got to finish him. And I see a lot of people that – um. Not, you know, not a lot of people, not, not, not a lot of fighters. To be honest, not a lot. A lot of the fighters, they uh, they put up a good fight. fight. But some fighters, they, you know, they're afraid to go in and, and leave the all because they're afraid, you know, they're going to open up, open up. Because when you go over there to try to knock somebody out, you always, is a, is a chance because you open up, you close, you know, in a close distance and it, it's just it, you know, you're not covering up, you're not, you're not playing defensive. So it's a chance that you can also get finished. But, you know, that's my style, man. That's my style. I'm a big uh, uh, Mike Tyson fan, you know. And uh, I got, you know, that's this what I do. Trying to finish every fight. I was looking at the rankings, you know. And then I looked at the rankings from 2015. And the only guys left in the light heavyweight rankings is you, Gustafsson, DC, and John Jones. That's it. Everybody else is new to the rankings. Gustafsson is retired now. DC, he might be retired. So that only leaves you with you and John Jones, you know. It seems like everybody's focused on DC and John Jones. The media, the fans, you know, they don't put you in the conversation. Do you feel like you're overlooked right now, even though you are top 10? Uh... I don't pay attention to this stuff too much, you know. I, you know, I'm just living my life. I have my gym going on with my gym training. I, I'm, you know, I, uh, I'm not a, you know, I'm not a guy that, you know, go on Instagram and uh, and do too much of uh, media and uh, and all these things. You know, uh, uh, could be my fault. You know, um, the I'm not putting my my name out there too much. You know, it's it's my thing. I'm very um, relaxed, chill back. I like to fight. I like to go over there and fight, and uh, and that's what I like to do. I'm not. I don't really pay attention to those things too much. Um, I, 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 you know, I feel happy, feel glad that like you know things like that. I didn't know. Like you know, you you just mentioned there. You know, uh, it's kind of cool actually. Mm -hmm. You it say, I uh, mean, just me and John Jones in a in the light heavyweight division. They stay. Uh, um, yeah, it, it's cool, but you know, uh, it's always cool to break records and have records and and all this stuff. But uh, I'm not I'm not looking for recognition or this and that, and I'm not pushing. You know, but those guys like uh, like you just come down and and look something like that and mention that to me or or to the public. That's great. You know, I love it and. I appreciate it, but also I'm not. I'm, I'm not a guy that goes in and, and take a look at those stuff. I don't even know, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't even know, to be honest. I mentioned, you know, you and John Jones, but now the the new the new wave is coming. You know, you got Dominic Reyes, Anthony Smith, Tiago Santos, Johnny Walker. Have you met any of these guys? You know, because these guys are, could be all fresh matchups for you, which is exciting. Yeah. No, I met the Brazilian guys, uh, uh, Johnny Walker and and, and uh, Thiago Santos. Yeah, I met them a couple of times, you know. 
they're cool people, cool guys, and uh, I'm rooting for them, man. You know, they work hard. They um, um, they they uh, they come from a you know a background that kind of like you know a poor background, and then now they live the dream. And I'm glad that they live the dream. You know, I'm rooting for them to do good, except when they fight me. If they fight me, no. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Now. UFC 239, John Jones, he defended the title against Tiago Santos. A lot of people thought Tiago Santos won that fight. Did you think Santos took the title? Um, it was a close fight, but, uh, you know, knowing knowing that John Jones was, like, uh, putting the pressure on, you know, and, and, and Tiago, you know, he hurt his knee. In the beginning of the fight, I think I don't know what round, but I I saw when he hurt his knee and uh, he was very uh, unstable, you know, fell and down and stuff. Uh, and John Jones pressure, I kind of knew before, even before the it was a very close fight, but I knew the, John Jones was gonna keep the title because he's a champion, he's a nominated champion, and uh, you know, leaving the hand of the judges like that, the champion always got a, got the preference, you know. All right, let's talk about. Your upcoming fight, September 14th, Vancouver. You're going to Canada. You know, you're taking on the number 14 ranked light heavyweight, Nikita Krylov. Are you happy with this matchup or did you expect someone else? No, I'm happy. I'm happy with the, the matchup. They call me, you know, and they say, hey, the guy's going to fight. Um, they offer me also me uh, early, uh, but I wasn't, I wasn't uh, you know, I wasn't going to be ready for... For August, you know, I have some issues I have to deal with it. And uh, I said, no, I can fight him in September. I fight anyone in September. And they come up with uh, Nikita Krylov, Kry Kry right? Krylov. And, um, and uh, yeah, I, uh, I'm i excited for the fight, you know, uh, opponent, tough opponent. And, um, you know, it's great to be back in the, in the grinding, man. I love it. I love the fight. I don't, I, you know, just go over there and... And live the dream, my friend. I'm not really care uh, who am I fighting, you know. I don't know about the title fight. Or I'm not even looking uh, for all the politics right now. I uh, I don't want to spend my energy in uh, all this politics. I want to get a title shot to this and that, you know. Hopefully, I, I get to uh, beat him. Uh, training very well. I think um, hopefully I got to finish him, break the record, right? Mm -hmm. And... Um, and hopefully they give me a top contender, you know, to put me in a, you know, in that title line, a title line content. Yeah, yeah. It, it seems like you are lined up for that. You beat Krylov, you get a title eliminator. That's that's probably the most likely scenario for you, right? You you face one of these young guys that are supposed to be fighting John Jones next. Uh, I think it's exciting times for you. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited, you know. I'm uh, training hard. Of course, I gotta uh, look at these guys, and, and I'm not, you know, how you say, um, uh, underestimate underestimating him, right? In any any way, but you know, I'm training very hard. I'm having a very good camp lately, and hopefully, stay the same the whole camp and get in there and and do my best, my friend. Do my best and finish. Stylistically, Krylov. Is he a better matchup for you, do you think, compared to your last two fights? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. We find out, right? But uh, I think um, he's a good striker. He's got, you know, he's one of the guys that have uh, uh, one of the most submissions, too. On, uh, I, I, because somebody mentioned that to me, like, uh, he's, he's, right, uh, he's right there, right? He's one of the most uh, submission in the game as well. Um, he got some good submissions. Uh, and... Uh, He's a grinder, man. His last fight with um, San Peru was was a very good, uh, you know, a war, grappling war, you know, go back and forth. And he's a he, he's a striker, but um, I think um, I think it's a good style for me. I got a you know I got a good game plan for him. Of course, we're not gonna discuss this over here, but uh, yeah, I think it's gonna be a good matchup. Who have you been working with, you know, in the gym to get ready for Krylov? Uh, my, my, of course, my uh, coach is John Hack. You know, uh, you know, it's not not here because I live in uh, West uh, West Coast, right? East Coast. East Coast. Yeah, and he's in West Coast. Uh, 
uh, but I sent him videos of his sparring. He, you know, he sent me video. Of, but then I, I have finally to lose my coach, my my full time coach right now, the guy that has been with me for um, I don't know the last like five years mm. that I come back, you know, to United States five six years, um, and, and it's been great uh, with sparring and training. I have um, uh, Luis Enrique. Um, Kyle B that that's uh, also was fighting in the UFC. He's gonna fight in uh, England. Um, uh, I forgot the name. Uh, C F F. Is that like is, no? He's gonna C-F-F-C? fight for the top. Huh? C F F C. Yeah, C F F C. Right. Yeah, I think. Yeah, so. he's gonna fight for that title, and the same day I fight. So we're doing camp together. He's a heavyweight. He's very uh, very good. Very good partner to train, man. Very heavy, very strong guy. And the uh, Caio Magalhães is one of my uh, longtime training partners. And you know, I have a uh, Fanelli son. He's a great, great boxer. The kid is looking to be Olympic champion. He's gonna be on the Olympics for sure. And uh, yeah, I, that's all I needed right there, man. I have like a great guys on the ground that come to help me out uh, from New York. John Nando and uh, Keith. He's also fighting UFC. Uh, Kit Br- British, 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 yeah. So yeah, I got a, I got a good camp, man. I got a very good camp over here. Good thing going. My house, uh, being home, you know, being home, be with uh, my wife there. <laughs> uh, she's a big help, and uh, it's amazing. It's amazing to be here. It feels so much better. Yeah, you know, having. A supportive wife is is huge for any any anybody, not even just fighters, right? But you mentioned you working with heavyweights. I saw you working with Todd Duffy. He's gonna fight on the same card. He's making a return. He hasn't fought in four years. How how did he feel when you were training with him? It feel good, you know. It feel good when we train. I mean, we we um when I was training with him over there, I was in the UFC PI in Las Vegas. You know, I was like, we not even have a. We, we didn't have a fight schedule, you know, we just, you know, we're just training for, so we're not going full, full time, full hard, but I trained with Todd Duff before, a long time ago, when he helped me out with uh, Camp for Jones and for Ryan Bader, we trained with him in ATT uh, back then, and uh, he, he's incredible, man, and uh, he looked good, he looked good, he looked uh, confident, he looked like he was, um, he was getting ready to prepare and, and, and to get back in the game and, and, and full force. He was excited. He was excited to be, get back and, and train hard. Hopefully he's, um, I haven't talked with him, but hopefully he's uh, he's doing a really good camp and I'm rooting for the guy. The guy is a, is a great, great man. Yeah, I spoke with him uh, a couple of weeks ago. He, he loves it in Vegas and uh, he's having a great camp and he told me that, you know, he's ready to make his return and, and, uh, yeah, he's just like his body is is back to normal. Now, you know, your fight is on September 14th. There's a lot of big light heavyweight fights coming up in the next couple of months. October 18th, you got Reyes versus Weidman. November 2nd, Johnny Walker versus Corey Anderson. You know, will you be ready? Will you be ready for, you know, to step in into one of those spots if somebody pulls out? I was, you know, like I say, I'll, I'll, I'll go uh, a fight at a time, uh, you know, uh, for sure. If if everything goes well in this fight and no injury, for sure, you know, a hundred percent, a hundred percent, I'll be ready. Um, like I say, longest is uh, no injuries in a fight, and uh, I take a couple weeks off of training because the camp has been hard, man. And after that, you know. <clears throat> Anytime, man. Anytime, uh, you know, I get the opportunity to to jump in, and so I keep, uh, I always keep like uh, that's a good um, good mentality of mine. It's like every time I see a lot of light heavyweights, uh, because I I've been calling before to fill in, and I was not ready. I was not on the weight because I was too heavy. You know, I was not, I was not ready. I could not take the fight, so. Was was gonna be unprofessional of me to take a, any fight out of shape, you know. So every time I see 
uh, light heavyweight fights like that that I, is a possibility that somebody get injury. Not that I ruin for anybody to get injury, but it's a possibility in the sport. And I'm always going to keep like 80% training in the gym, ready to go, my weight to be down. And if they call me, I'll be happy to jump in. Yeah, it's it's a big advantage for you because you are in Connecticut. Both of those cards, one is in Boston, the other one is in New York City. It's very close, you know. That's why I asked you about that. Just drive it, just drive it. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. I'll be, you know, I'll be thinking of that before, you know. Right now, I just think of this fight. <clears throat> You know, go over there and leave it all in this fight and uh, do whatever I have to do to win. And, um, you know, if everything goes well, the hope that, uh, that it is and come up with no injuries. And definitely, you know, you get in there, get another fight this year. It's not, it's not, it's not going to be so bad, you know. So it's going to be my tour this year. If I can get 4A, it's good. It's perfect. I can get four fight at my 40 years old age, man. Because I'll be 40. One, uh, one is, oh, it's at the, yeah, I'll be, I'll be about 40. You know, my, my birthday is uh, October 28th. So, yeah. yeah. You know, when you look at the new crop of fighters coming up, who do you think has the best chance of beating John Jones? Right here, man. <laughs> oh, no, of course, I, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. Like, uh, of course, I think uh, mentality, but like uh, right now, looking the um, uh, the fights, man, John John is just like a unique style, you know. I think um, uh, Thiago Santos did a very good fight, like, you know. Let's see how he recovery will be. Um, um, what's that Polish guy? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, man. I, I'm not trying to disrespect anyone. I, I actually I like the guy, but his name is. Uh, the Polish guy that just won, he just beat, um, he didn't beat uh, Jimmy, no, Jimmy Mano, no. Yeah, he, Jan Blakovic. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. He's, uh, he's the problem in the line for the title. But Johnny, you see Johnny Walker, that is very explosive. We see, I think Johnny Walker maybe a couple more fights just to see how, you know, he needs, just to see how, but like you, you see the way he's fighting, and it's very explosive. And the way he's explosive, the, the way how powerful he is, he a guy like that always gonna have a chance against uh, anybody, anybody, you know, including John Jones. I think uh, the the height is there. He, he's young. He's explosive. Uh, he's a he's a very uh, a, a, a tough contender for john jones i think all right i know that you're happy fighting for the ufc but i have to ask you about ryan bader you know he's over at bellator he's he's carrying two belts light heavyweight heavyweight you know does a small piece of you want to go over there and fight him again uh no no i don't i you know i'm happy where i am right now um if it comes to a point that uh um, you know, I, I, that I have to fight for Bellator. It'd be great to fight uh, Ryan Bader, you know. Um, but uh, you know, man, I, you know, right now I'm a, it's a different organization. I don't even want to cross uh, bridge and talk about it. You know, uh, uh, UFC taking care of me very well. They uh, um, they always give me fights. You know, they they, they find opponents. Uh, last last call. You know, last. Last minute, last time um, when uh, Kutelaba got hurt, and I say, "Hey man, I need a, I need a fight. I need a fight. I'm ready. I did a hard uh, eight week camp, and please get me a fight. Get me a fight because this is this is a BS. You know, uh, this is the last week of the fight. I already did eight weeks of camp. This is a, this is the week of the fight. So they went over there and, and got me a guy." So those kind of things, you got to appreciate it. You got to appreciate those guys, you know, what they do. And they they, they, they taking care of me, and uh, I'm happy where I am, you know. Um, Ryan Bader is doing an amazing thing. That's good. Uh, if you, we ever cross uh, paths again, it would be, be a great, it'd be a great uh, time to give him that rematch, you know. And, uh, <laughs> 
you know, I might, uh, I might have to knock him out again. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Uh, one last thing before I let you go, you know, there's a lot of debate of this question is, you know, you yourself, do you consider yourself a fighter or a martial artist? <sighs> uh, right now, man, yeah, I was like, uh, I'm always loved the martial arts, right? Like, uh, I'm a fighter that goes in there and give the fight, but I have a tons of respect for martial arts, respect and, uh, and the discipline, the martial arts, they, they teach me and to pass it on. So, yes, I am. I can see both, you know, but I am a martial art artist for sure. For sure. I am like a 100% in a discipline of, I think martial arts give you a way uh, uh, more discipline, more self-confidence, a fighter. You know, if you think about it, just go over there and, and, and fight and brawl, you know, uh, but you know, to be at the higher level, like I, you know, like John Jones, you know, those guys, you have to be a martial artist, you know, because there's no way you have to have a fighting instinct, you know, you have to have that killing instinct, the heart, the determination, but, you know, the discipline of martial arts is the one that's going to make you to focus and, and get the championships. All right, man. September 14th, US, UFC on ESPN Plus 16, Vancouver, Canada. Thank you, Glover, for the time. I always appreciate it, and uh, good luck on the fight and uh, the future, man. It's bright for you. All right, my friend. Thank you very much. It's always good to talk with you.